Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we've got a house that's got no heating and no hot water. And this is the same one where we fit that new expansion vessel. And we're just testing the heating pump, which obviously controls everything. And it doesn't sound very good. So it's quite noisy. The system completely full, water everywhere. Uh, but using the thermal imaging camera, we can see that the pump is getting warm from where it's just been working and not doing anything. But when we test and trace the pipe work, the boiler flow is warm, but we don't get any circulation whatsoever back down to the pump. So I'm suspected that inside the pump, something's gone wrong. Maybe the impellers burnt out or melted and it's not actually circulating, but the pump valves either side are gonna be need to be swapped because I don't really wanna be touching these. And also the auto bypass uh, is leaking as well. So that's gonna have to be changed. So we're gonna be installing a brand new pump and this is a Salus with two new pump valves and we also got a new auto bypass. And what I might do as well is cut a isolation valve in here so I've got full control over here and that means that we don't have to drain down in the future. So let's put you down, let's get plumbing. So now we've got the system on drain, what you want to do is open up some air vents and you should hear it suck in. One little tip to make sure it is, bit of spit, put it on the air vent and it should disappear. Nice little tip for you. So the system that I'm working on is a pressurized system. As you can see here, it's got an expansion vessel with a pressure gauge. He's should be on zero. Uh, but because he's fed with a cold water main, I'm able to literally just make sure that I got power isolated and just drain him. If you don't have one of these, you could have a gravity fed system. So you need to make sure that your cold water is isolated to your header tank. Otherwise, when you open up the air vents and everything else, you're just going to constantly have that water pressure coming at you. So always make sure that you isolate the water correctly. So while we're waiting for the heating system to drain down, I'm going to start dewiring this pump and connecting up the new connections onto the new one. So I actually keep all my electrical kit in a separate bag. So I'm gonna have some snips, VDE screwdrivers, and also a fluke tester and a wire stripper. So the new connector has got a little grommet. And um, what I find easiest way to do is just by slicing them off. And then we put a nut on. And that gives you a nice little bit of force to push that through. Now we can strip the cable. So we're gonna be using the Nipex Ergo strip. And it's got all the little sizes in here and also for flex either side. So. What I do is just put them up here like that, clamp them over the top, give them a few turns, give them a yank. Super easy. And with these, they got these little connectors in here, so I'm going to make this as short as possible. There we go. So this system used to have an auto air vent, but it was leaking. So I had to put this one in, in its place. And I'll just open them up and make sure we've got nothing coming out. So this is my preferred way of removing a pump, especially when you've got no play on the valves. 
I like to slice him straight through here and straight through here and then the pump can come out and then it allows me to get play to drain through the valves if you're doing it that way. So I'm just gonna use a saber saw, just the quickest way. So before we make these in fully, I'm just going to check our distances from our pump because sometimes they can be different. Get up there. And as you can see, we've got quite a lot of gaps. So we're going to have to extend either this pipe or this pipe. I think my most preferred is probably this one as I don't think that there's quite enough here. As you saw me earlier, it was a quite a struggle to get the olive off. So might just de-sweat this one and extend them up a little bit. So we'll just check for water. We've got nothing. So that's the plumbing and the wiring done for the pump. And now we're just gonna swap out this auto bypass that's leaking. So we'll just check the new bypass and see if he fits. And he's too short there as well. So I have to cut him back.
So to gain full control on this drop down section, I really want to fit an isolation valve. So let's cut this bad boy in here. So the last thing I'm going to do is actually cut an isolator valve right before this air vent. Just in case we have any air problems, uh, we can stick a auto air vent back in as well without draining the system. So we will just slice in. So that's all the work done. I've filled up the heating system. I didn't think you'd want to watch that. Always make sure all your valves are open, especially your pump valves. These always come shut. Turn them on and do it at the packing gland and that should stop them from leaking. So we just turn the boiler on and hopefully we should see an improvement. Well, that's the whole aim of this anyway. And just watch the pump come to life. already he sounds much much quieter and we'll just wait for the system to get a bit hot and then we we'll use the thermal imaging camera and see exactly if everything's doing what it should be so i've given it five minutes or so and we can already see the heat coming through and also up through the lagging that looks pretty cool so we just check the boiler and the boiler we've got a nice flow up here sometimes you can actually see through the ceiling um can see it just go up through here. Can we see it up through here? Uh, no, you can see the lights there. But yeah, there you go. You can see all the pipe work getting lovely and hot. So that was it. It just needed a new pump. But obviously, to fit that pump, we had to do some alterations. We had to make this a little bit longer. I wanted to cut the return valve in, so I've got perfect control now. If I ever want to do any work in by the cylinder room, what we'd have to do is just shut them off, shut them off, and I can deal with everything on the heating controls without draining all the radiator system. New bypass is tucked in here. So yeah, if you liked today's plumbing video, please give it a like, drop a comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you on the next one.